Hey everyone, this is Zen, and welcome to Dominion 6, at a glance. Today we'll talk about Pythium, the Serpent Cult. They are Illwinter's take on the late Roman Empire, with a powerful army and weak but diverse mages. There's a strong focus on poison, and they can organize undisciplined forces into formations. Their units come in five distinct flavors. They have the Red Shield Limitani, which have good equipment, cheap cost, and low map move, the more elite, expensive Comitatense, with very high map move for humans. The emergency one-time use gladiators, which, while strong and inexpensive, they only fight until they are either wounded or they land a hit on, in battle. They also have poison-resistant serpent cataphracts, and then sacred hydras. The commanders for Pythium are very diverse, and this section might take longer than usual. To start, they have great leadership commanders that are foreign recruit, but they don't have any shields with the exception of the fort recruit only tribuni, and those are pretty good. They come with two recruitment point sacred assassins that have armor piercing, death poison daggers, and can scale walls. Their two fort mages are often overlooked, but essentially you want the Renata for when you want Water 2 magic, and the Renatus when you want Death 2 magic. Otherwise, they do kind of fill the same role. Always important to note that their primary capital mage is only two recruitment points and can still cast Foul Vapors even in Dominion 6. The Theurg is just kind of there for air magic. Now, they have a lot of foreign recruit mages you can only get outside of your forts and with labs. Essentially, you have the Mysties and the Apoptes for when you want Earth and Glamour as an inconsistent off-path, and for the Apoptes to increase your growth by two through a specific ritual. The Reveler can break you into blood, sort of, and the Heliodromus can either become a Fire 3, Nature 2 through a ritual, or just be a regular Fire 2. Moving on to the summons of Pythium. They've got a few, but the important ones to note are going to be the Lar, which traditionally was always good for the Armorian roster, but in the Late Age is a little redundant. They can also use a very cheap blood spell to summon satyrs, which importantly have seduction and can summon maenads. Now, those are their national summons. For their non-national summons, I actually recommend the Swamp Drake, especially because you can lead undisciplined troops and actually put them on hold and fire, so they're easier to use. The only hard part about them is that they are swamp summonable only, which is almost kind of fine because you're going to want to put a temple in a swamp to summon more hydras anyways. But these synergize extremely well with your nation, and I highly recommend summoning these. So my recommended way of using this combined roster is leveraging your tough and strategically mobile line infantry to work closely together with undisciplined recruits or summons. Thanks to a special poison resistance spell that your nation has, your units are going to thrive fighting in poison clouds while the enemy suffers, especially considering how strong poison is right now. The basic strategy is then going to look something like painting defensive buffs, especially poison resistance, on your line infantry, and then using undisciplined units as unorthodox shock troops. You also have the ability to add a lot of undead, which are naturally poison resistant, as auxiliaries to ultimately grind down your enemy. For the Late Age Pythium spells, I still have to start with Gift of the Sacred Swamp, which is going to be that unique poison resistant spell I mentioned earlier. This is available early and does not cost any gems to paint on large groups of units. We're going to have to move on straight into Foul Vapors, which is a meta defining spell from Dominions 5 that, although is available a little later in Dominion 6, is still very strong. But not only that, you're going to be using a lot of other poison than just this spell, which is going to make Gift of the Sacred Swamp very critical to the rest of your gameplay. Now, if you're going to whittle down your enemy and win battles of attrition, it's important to have all of these defensive buffs that your mages can cast. So we're going to be using a lot of Moss Body, a lot of Body Ethereal, Gift of Formlessness, and that's all going to keep your very strong infantry units alive in battle against most enemies. Now, we don't only want to use our actual troops because they're kind of expensive on gold. So we're going to supplement these 
with spells like Horde of Skeletons, or summoning a variety of bugs through Swarm, Nest of Asps, or Salamanders, which a lot of your mages can cast. Finally, we're back to Howl. I feel like this is in every video I make, but Howl is just a very strong spell, and if you have access to be able to cast it, I really think you should. And now we're going to get to the more intricate parts of their spell list. Their mages don't have very high paths, so you might be forced to use communions to access maybe some of the stronger spells that you need. And the same goes for Earth Power. I normally don't want to link Earth Power, but we're talking a lot about buffing our units, and not having Earth Magic is critical. We do have very rare Earth 1 mages, and they might need to spend gems to cast Earth Power, and now at Earth 2 they can cast with some more gems some of the more powerful Earth buffs, and they are definitely strong enough that I have to mention this despite how expensive it can be. The Bless for Late Age Pythium is a lot more versatile now in Dominion 6 than it used to be. The Hydras are a lot stronger this time around, and a strong Hydra Focus Blessed can actually be very fun. I tried one on a Bliss recently, and it was a blast. You can also move to some more traditional scales-related Blesses or Pretenders, like this one. I've taken this one before in a Dominion's 5 game, and it just allows me to have better scales overall, and then a Titan that I get later in the game that's going to be able to cast Globals, Forge, Crystal Matrices, or just add a more late game resistant Bless to my Hydras. Finally, you can also go with another traditional type of Pretender design, which is going to be the Defender Titan. In this case, I'm taking the Defender Colossus, because that is probably one of the strongest defensive chassis available in the game, but I'm still able to get it with some good scales, and by it having high air and high earth magic, those are two paths that Late Age Pythium tends to struggle with. So even after its defensive properties aren't as useful, it can still come and join battles and cast very important spells. Moving on to the gameplay of Late Age Pythium. In the early game, I'll actually recommend against mixing Hydras and your mundane troops early on. You might not have the Gift of Sacred Swamp coverage you need to prevent some friendly poison. Your starting army is very strong and importantly has a lot of map move, so I recommend recruiting more Komita Tensei, the green shield units, to take advantage of this instead of the red shield ones. You also want to foreign recruit your leaders so that your capital recruitment can be more used to recruit, say, assassins, which will help you take out cavalry provinces without significant losses. Once expansion starts closing out, I'd recommend you start making unforded labs around your capital, just so you can start producing a significant amount of mages, and you can also recruit foreign recruit armies to defend that infrastructure. Moving into the mid game, you're going to start wanting to mix strong defensive buffs on your infantry, who should now be mixed with your hydras to take advantage of their poison clouds. Keep in mind that your Serpent Priests can actually tell your Hydras to hold an attack so that you can place them further back in the combat, away from your Legionaries, so that you have time to actually buff Poison Resistance on everybody. Now you're going to want to start Sight Searching in all the paths available to you in preparation for the late game. You don't really know what mix of gems you're going to end up with, so you want to start this early. And then, you know, creatively use your unique tight rain ability to mix in undisciplined summons or local recruits like Barbarians or Bone Tribe to cover any weaknesses you feel your roster may have. Finally, onto the late game, you want to focus on your magic diversity by drilling deep into whatever path you found the most gems for. You also want to try to break into blood. You can do this with revelers, or you can try to brute force it with scouts. Every single army of yours is going to want to run Foul Vapors, even if you see the enemy is using the Poison Resistance spells, because it is cheaper and easier for you to cast Foul Vapors than it is for them to cast Poison Resistance, most likely. Continue using Hydras and Green Shield troops, and try to start avoiding the Cataphracts if Magic Resistance checks get involved, because the Lizard kind of doesn't have good Magic Resistance. And keep in mind, there was a lot of freedom in your Pretender design, so hopefully there was a late game plan in mind when you made that. Hey everyone, I completely forgot to talk about Gladiators in the gameplay section, and I just want to point out that they are very inexpensive for the weapons, armor, and even the stats that they have. You just want to keep in mind that 
they're only going to last at most one to three fights. As soon as they are wounded or land a hit on someone, they will leave your army. So use them sparingly, but don't forget that they're really, really strong and you can recruit them in mass to save you from a dire situation. And somehow we kept late age Pythiums at a glance under 15 minutes. Pretty damn good, I think. I want to give a shout out to Rymark for suggesting the combined arms section of the video where I'm going to try to give a little bit more insight in how you would like to have the mages and the units work together. Normally I could specify it or make it more specific to certain nations you might be fighting that are popular or certain types of nations like giants or selves, but I feel that late age Pythium is fairly one dimensional and that you just want this solid line of infantry that is going to hold the enemy in place while you poison the crap out of them, regardless of who you're fighting almost. So maybe in other sections or other videos, it might be a little bit more detailed, but we'll work on that as we go. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys next time.